Hello everyone, welcome to One Heart, your cross-cultural, missional, worshipping, intergenerational movement and faith community in the life of the Uniting Church. Welcome to our 4pm Sunday service, which is still online, even though the government restrictions are starting to lift. As a church, as the Uniting Church, our senior leadership is still being very cautious about the fact that we do have a range of age groups and health conditions and there are vulnerable, vulnerable people in our church. So we thank you for your patience. We are still going to be online for the next few weeks at least, um, but good things are just around the corner and we should be looking at going back to normal safely really soon. This is our church service, so it has all the usual things that you've become accustomed to, especially if you've been watching for a few weeks now. We have the introduction part. Hi, that's me. Uh, we have the worship music. We have a brief message from Pastor Ace. And then this part of the church service wraps up at five o'clock, but stay around because we've got a lot of little activities. We've got our youth and young adult small groups, the DNM program that's going to be on Zoom. We've got a kids group that's going to be on Zoom as well. Those links will be available for you in the chat on the right hand side. During the service we have the little button somewhere in the bottom of the screen uh, that allows you to connect with our ministry team, especially if you're in need of pastoral care. That's a really useful little button. We do also have another button that will appear as like a little box uh, in the chat on the right hand side right about now uh, for the offering. The offering is something that Christians, regular members of the church do as part of their commitment to the church. It isn't something that you should feel forced to do, especially if today is your first time here. During the week we have our Friday night prayer, um, 8 o'clock on Friday nights. That's a little group that we have, it's, it's in English, but we, we pray to God together from different backgrounds. I really encourage you to be part of that if you're not already. Um, that's also on Zoom and we can share the link with you if you don't have it and you'd like to be part of that. Just before we go into the rest of the service, I have a little thing for you. It's called the icebreaker question. So for today's one, I think a little bit of setup is necessary. Uh, what I mean by that is I've got a little bit of a story for you. During the week, on Tuesday, actually, I had the great pleasure to be part of the recording of the next segment, the worship music. And there was this song that you will hear later in today's service called Simple Gospel. And as part of the lyrics, which by the way, for today's service will be the bottom of the screen. So please do sing along in your own homes. Um, but one of the lyrics was something like, I'm laying down all my religion and, and we're going back to Jesus. Now that's got a lot of depth and nuance to it that I don't even know if we can have enough time to explain here. But it's one of those really catchy lyrics that I think it's great that it stays with us and it give us an op gives us an opportunity to talk about that in the future. So I just want to ask you, my dear church community, and please do leave your responses in the chat on the right hand side, what really meaningful and really interesting and deep and, and thoughtful Christian worship lyrics have you heard recently? Please do share both the lyric and the song name in the chat on the right hand side. I think it's a great way for us to just compare notes on this kind of thing. And I'll see you in church. So I hope you have a great time today, uh, this wonderful Sunday, and um, I'll catch you in the small groups. Take care now. Enjoy the rest of the service.
Good afternoon, church, and welcome to One Heart Online Worship. And we want to just begin our praise and worship with this amazing Psalm chapter 145. From uh, verse 3, it says, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commands your works to another. They tell of your mighty act. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And then I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And then I will proclaim your great deeds. Verse 7 he says, They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Today, we as the children of God gather in this space of online worship to testify who our Father God is, to testify what kind of journey we are in together as a community of Jesus Christ our Lord. So we would love to share this extended invitation with you all to join us this online praise and worship. And please open your mouth and heart to declare and testify who our Father God is. Let's take this moment for a few seconds. What kind of deeds and marvelous and glorious works of our majesty God has done in your daily lives? And let us prepare our heart and spirit to dive into this time of praise and worship. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for this another brand new day that we can gather together and praise and worship to our majesty king lord father god we are here to see your glory we are here as sisters and brothers in jesus christ to testify these marvelous works of our lord jesus christ in our daily journey please be with us lord as we welcome you holy spirit in our gathering today in jesus name we all pray and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's sing and praise, church. Let us put our voice together and testify who our Father God is. Come on. I saw Satan will like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Come on. I've been living signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven My praise, my praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from then to life Cause grace we wrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony this is my testimony. Yeah. Let's come together, church, and see it out. Come together, sons and daughters. Born with blood and wash with waters. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son, and Father. Come on to finish what He started. Our God, our God, will finish what He 
is my testimony from death to life. Cause Christ rewrote my story, I'll testify. My Jesus Christ to righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony, oh I'm alive. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause Christ rewrote my story.
Christ our Lord, we will really rejoice our journey. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the presence that you bless us today to sing out, to declare this beautiful name, our Lord Jesus Christ. Beautiful name. 
in this powerful name, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we as the followers of Christ can testify all those beautiful and glorious deeds and words of our God and as we have received this greatest commandment and commission that we will reach to the end of the world to proclaim the gospel. And Father God, in every single deed and word, please pour out your blessings and grace upon each and every one of sisters and brothers in one heart community that they may be able to proclaim and testify who you are, Lord. We thank you that we could gather together in this online platform that we still can gather our heart and praise and worship you, Lord. And let your gospel, let the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ inspire and reach to every single heart and spirit that we will continue to grow in our faith, in our spirituality. Until the day we can gather together at offline, at the church, to share our testimonies with one another, we ask you, Lord, to continue to guide us and lead us and teach us how to worship with this online worship, Lord. In Jesus' name, we all pray. And everyone said, Amen. Today's Bible reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16 to 23. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that... In preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge, and so not make full use of my rights as a preacher of the gospel. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself to slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free the gods from the God's law, but I am under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law to the weak, I become weak to, the, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings, preacher of the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to be with God. Uh, before we dive into the word of God to understand what, what Apostle Paul tries to teach us tonight, I, I want us to think about some life-changing experiences in our life. Uh, some of us may experience these life-changing experiences through reading different books. And, and some of us may experience these life-changing experiences from different conversations with your friends, um, with your teachers, and some different kinds of relationships and um, group dynamics and your career can impact you in terms of growing different values and understandings of who you are and what, what principles you are living with. And I actually experienced something that I could see myself being changed a lot. When I was in Korea, I was quite a passive little boy, particularly in a classroom at school. Uh, I was not able to express what I, what I was thinking and, and what I could express, my emotion or I, my needs. But since I, I came to Australia, I, I was quite surprised to see this 
freedom that the other student could express during these um, class times. Whatever teacher asked, I saw many hands up in the air and expressed what they think. And this kind of new experience and observation encouraged me to be changed in a way of being proactive to be able to express what I'm thinking and what my emotion is like. And that's how now I am able to stand here right in front of the camera and, and preach the gospel. Uh, when I was growing up, I could not imagine myself that I am able to do that. Even though I, I, was, I was quite passionate in, in terms of understanding the Bible and reading the Bible and meditating on it and sharing my thoughts in small group settings. But to be honest, I never imagined myself standing in front of a camera or in front of many people, the group of people, that I can preach the gospel. But this very interesting experience and observation in Australia, when I was younger, when I was about 17 years old, 16, 17 years old, this experience actually impacted me and changed me and transformed me. And I think these experiences are planned and provided by this Almighty God according to His plan in a way of forming servants of God who can work for the kingdom ministry, then this, this, uh, this case can be applied to the life of, of Apostle Paul. And, and today's Bible reading, when Paul was describing himself in, in, in this very interesting way, when we give our attention and read verse 19 of today's Bible reading, um, Apostle Paul said that though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. So Paul confessed and shared his life-changing experience once he started experiencing this real freedom, this genuine freedom in Jesus Christ. He, he experienced um, uh, this amazing freedom that he is he's no longer under the power of the sin or, or the law, but this real and genuine freedom in Jesus Christ. And, and, and this is what he experienced when he encountered Jesus, when he heard the voice of Jesus on the way to Damascus. And book of Acts chapter 9, verses from 1 through 5, explains this amazing story of life-changing experience of Saul. When he was Saul, when he was so energetic and, and upset and angry for those Christians, then he experienced this amazing moment of hearing and encountering this resurrected Jesus Christ. Book of Acts, chapter 9, verses from 1 through 5. He says, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, So, so, why do you persecute me? Verse 5, So said, who are you, Lord? So asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. When, when Paul has focused on his 
theoretical understanding of who he is and theological belief that all Christians are bad. <laughs> I need to get this permission from high priest to go and arrest them, persecute them. And, and I found this is really interesting way of explaining his attitude towards all those early Christians. In verse 1, he says, Saul was still breathing out murderous threat against the Lord's disciples. Murderous threat. That, that's who he was. This young man was on fire with his belief that I need to go to Damascus and arrest and persecute and take all those Christians, whether they are men and women, there's no mercy. I will take them back to Jerusalem as prisoners. That's, that's what he was on fire for. And, and from this personal character and what he was passionate for, once he experienced this moment of hearing the voice of Jesus, he has turned around and been completely transformed as a servant of God. As a servant of God. In, in previous verses of this 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul explains that I am a, an apostle, chosen and, and, and called apostle who are sent out to proclaim the gospel, particularly for Gentiles. In, in many of his letters, he introduced himself as an apostle for many Gentiles. And that's what he um, understood as his new identity. After he encountered and heard the voice of Jesus Christ, this resurrected Lord Jesus Christ appointed him as an apostle for many Gentiles. That's what Paul believes as his new identity. And in book of Acts chapter 9, verse 15, this is what the Lord Jesus has confirmed and affirmed with Ananias when he was told to take care of Saul. Ananias finds it's, it's too difficult, too challenging for him because Ananias understands that this young man Saul was very dangerous young man for my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. I heard many times that he tries to arrest and persecute and take my sisters and brothers in Christ back to Jerusalem as a prisoners. He, he was on fire in, in terms of persecuting many of my brothers and sisters. And he was questioning to Jesus. He was questioning to God. Do I really need to take care of this young man? This man is dangerous. I, I, don't, I don't really know what to do with him. And, and verse 15 uh, of chapter 9 in book of Acts, he said, But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. So Paul was chosen by Jesus Christ as an instrument to carry the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus had seen many potential and, and possible gifts and ways that this young man's soul can be transformed, can be changed as an instrument of the gospel, that he can reach to the end of the world in a way of preaching the gospel, sharing the gospel, establishing and founding church communities, especially with many Gentiles. And, and that's how Paul understands his new identity. And then once he experienced this amazing freedom, this 
indescribable freedom that he never experienced in his life before he encountered and heard the voice of Jesus. Paul now uh, explains that though I am free and, and belong to no man, now I am belong to Jesus Christ. I, I am in this freedom with Jesus Christ my Lord. But I make myself to slave to everyone to win as many as possible. Last Sunday we talked about our, our gift of humility that we can break down our barriers and worship together. And it is our slogan, it is our vision as a One Heart Church community with many uh, sisters and brothers who come from different cultural backgrounds, different age groups. We want to we include them in this gospel movement, in this missional journey. And now Paul, with this freedom in Jesus Christ, I chose to become slave. I chose to become, I make myself a slave to everyone. And he starts explaining what it means. And from verse 20, he says, To the Jew I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law. And in verse 21, he said, To those not having the law, I became like no, one not having the law. And in verse 22, he said, To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. And, and that's what his conclusion was. He explains that I have become all things to all men and women, so that by all possible means, I might save some. I might save some. We need to ask this question to ourselves today to be able to understand what Paul is trying to teach us as one of very important values that we are carrying on as a Christians, as a children of God. Why has he made himself to slave to all? He was rejoicing and declaring this freedom. And with this freedom... In Jesus Christ, in the gospel, he confessed that I made myself a slave to everyone. We need to ask this question to ourselves as Paul keep encouraging us. He's keep in inviting us to imitate him as he imitated Jesus Christ. And then we need to figure out the, the answer why has he made himself to slave to everyone? Why he has given up his freedom? His new joyful gift of freedom. In, in the other word, why do we need to give up our freedom to serve others? To be mindful for other people. And, and Paul explains and used this very interesting word to win as many as possible. To win as many as possible. And verse 23, he explains what does it mean for him to win as many as possible. It means that I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. And like Paul uh, said in verse 22, it means that I want to win as many as possible in a way of sharing the gospel, sharing this good news of Jesus Christ to all men and women, so that by all possible means, I might save them. I might save them. He is trying to save some people from something. And that's the good news. We, we've been reflecting on this one sentence of gospel. Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved the world. And, and, anyone, and anyone believes in Him, 
in Jesus Christ will not perish, but will have eternal life. And another reference in, in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 36, it says, He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So Paul clearly understood his responsibility and his duty as an, as an apostle who are sent out with the gospel is to save people from this God's wrath. And he now decided to become a slave to all that he can give up what he wants to do, but for the sake of the gospel, he can adopt many different situations and circumstances and conditions that he can continue to be used as an instrumental instrument of the gospel. That, that's what God has called Apostle Paul for. Uh, he remembers it and kept it in his heart. And for the sake of the gospel, Paul tried his best to continue to serve with this sense of unconditional love that he has received unconditionally. So he decided to stay in the city of Corinth for 18 months with his, with his self-funding way of serving all those sisters and brothers, those early Christians. He started preaching the gospel and organizing Bible studies and pastoral care system. And he believed that this is something I can offer as a slave. I, I don't care about what I want to do anymore. For the sake of the gospel, now I want to offer everything that I can preach the gospel. I can share the gospel. So for this mission of saving people, Paul now adapts to their way of life. But not in a secular frame, but in Jesus Christ. In verse 21, he said, To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law. But in a bracket, he explains that, Though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. So he explains that my freedom, my freedom to become a slave to everyone, and my freedom to be able to adapt in each, of, in each different ways of their living is not just frameless freedom that could be out of control and could be astray from the right pathway. But this freedom is in and under Jesus Christ my Lord. And now this power of incarnational love is in Paul. And Paul could use his love and freedom to serve others for the sake of the gospel. And particularly in this cross-cultural ministry, we, we don't want to be boastful for our own principles and, and, and flavor of what we can do as a Christians. As a Christian community, we want to be inclusive and yet, in the law of Jesus Christ, I think we should make this good balance between freedom and the gospel, what Jesus has taught us. We should be inclusive and yet biblical to be able to embrace people to experience this amazing transformative life. And that's the power of the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ is not just theoretical understanding of what Jesus Christ has done. We can easily make this mistake that our proclaiming the gospel is all about Jesus loves you and full stop. Jesus loves you and full stop. This is not completely the gospel. This is not full good news for us. The real good news is this. 
God, yes, as who you are, God loves you so much because you are created in the image of God. But we are all sinners and fall short to the glory of God and God still loves us. God could not give up on us, on his children, and he decided to send one and only son to his people to save them from the wrath of God. Because God is righteous God. He cannot be mixed with sin. The light and darkness can't be stays together. It can't be stays together. And God had to give up His one and only Son. He had to let His one and only Son to die on the cross for you and me. And this good news has enough power to transform our thoughts, our values, our principles to focus on Jesus Christ and His teaching. And then we all need to be transformed more like Jesus day by day and week by week. And we, we are all going to be in this process of sanctification. Sanctification. This is full gospel. We sometimes tend to, to share only the first part of the good news. Jesus loves you. God loves you. But what is the fruit of that love? If we, if we don't see any changes and differences after we hear the gospel, after we receive this unconditional love, after we start following this footprint of our Lord Jesus Christ, if we don't see any changes, what, what is the point of us dedicating our time to follow Jesus Christ? Well, what does it mean for us to come and join our, our church services and small groups and DNM and Bible studies? The real fruit from this good news and, and, and love is rejoicing this transformative life in the power of incarnational love. And that's the real gospel. And, and that's what Paul was emphasizing in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. You are called to freedom, brethren. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. We, we are no longer living for the desire of our flesh, but through love, serve one another. We are now all called to become new creation in Jesus Christ. We want to just turn around from our old life to, to set our life direction to follow Jesus Christ. And that's the power of the gospel. And now Paul, with this freedom, with this love, with my free will to choose to become a slave to all for the sake of the gospel. And that's what we need to decide today. It's not, a, it's not about our, our, our will. It's not about our preferences. It's not about what we like and what we want to do. But it's all about what I can do as an instrument of the gospel. How then I can proclaim and play out this good news as an instrument of the Jesus Christ. How can I prepare myself to be flexible enough in this frame of our Lord Jesus Christ and His love that we will continue to share the gospel? If you really experience this power of incarnation and love, then let us all practice this freedom in Jesus and this unconditional love of God in a way of serving others. And like slaves, we'll give up what we want, what we are desiring for. But for the sake of the gospel, we will continue our journey together with each different gift. And yet, for one greatest purpose of sharing and proclaim the good news 
to save as many as we can. May the Spirit of God strengthen us, strengthen each and every one of us in one heart ministry that we will continue to reach to those unreached people. And people will enjoy this new transformative life and freedom in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father God, we thank you that you have called us as an instrument of the gospel. And we thank you that you have strengthened us to practice this freedom in Jesus Christ, to love and serve others. Lord Father God, we ask you, continue to lead us and guide us for the sake of the gospel. As you have called us to form this One Heart Ministry and the community where we can fulfill the vision of cross-cultural and, and missional and worshipping movement. And Lord Father God, we ask you to bless each and every one of our members and sisters and brothers in One Heart Church as they are bringing their different gifts to use for the sake of the gospel. Lord, we want to continue to praise you. We want to continue to proclaim the gospel as an instrument that we can glorify this name, Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and always. Let us go in peace to serve and love our sisters and brothers, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Living signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven My praise, my praise belongs to you forever story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony yeah let's come together church and see it out come together sons and daughters but with blood and wash in water Spirit, Son, and Father, come on to finish what He started. Our God, our God, will finish what He started. This is my testimony from that to life. God's grace rewrote my story. I'm testified by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm just